even there. Would you say you wasted a lot of money in that process where you thought this peak would last forever? I blew dough, bro. Yeah. yeah. I blew dough. Nah, 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 nah. We ate that dough. We blew that dough, you know. Um, And I think it was a shock. I remember the first month after the hustle, you know, first time you're going to Durban. Oh, they're giving you 10K in this club, 10K in that club, 10K in that club in one night. Two of those clubs are giving it to you in cash, mm. you know. Hey family, a quick one. If you're watching this, it means you are enjoying this conversation and this exciting episode that I'm having with my guest. But something exciting, if you want to have me come to your private event or your corporate event, you can book me to be an MC or a speaker at your event by looking at the details on the screen or the details in the description box. Anyway, let's continue with the episode. Hey, so for a, for a lot of people who... I'd say uh, transitioning, coming to a new season mm. or unearthing a new season, mm. um, especially women, I don't know, I'm not implying anything. <laughs> sure. They go through the space where they take off all their hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely all about transitioning and yeah. moving on. Yeah. Where is Big Star Johnson's hair? And, and why did it all just get removed? Hey, one day? hey, um, I should find that's a good question. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a transition. Yeah. You know, yeah, I I felt like I had to rebrand without necessarily changing my name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I felt like I even the music, yes. So I created the I created this new project and the process of creating this project took so much out of me that I felt like a piece of me had to die. Yeah. In yeah. order for Hectic. me me to come alive. Yeah. So yeah when yeah. I cut my dreads it was just a yeah, it was sort of like an instruction as well from the higher self telling me like, hey boy, you know, this is the way we're going. While you had the dreads, yes. um, a lot of people uh, attach dreadlocks with being rooted. 100%. African 100%. And, and having a, a sense of oneness with being a true African self. Did yes. you feel like that when you had the dreads? And why did it take you so long to reach a decision to remove them? Um... First of all, the dreads for me wasn't a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, they sort of just happened and mm -hmm. they grew and, I, and then I, I, I got attached. I got so attached to the hair. And also, I've always wanted to have long hair. You know, in hip hop, there's this thing of like the plaids, the, the twists. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I wanted the opportunity to play around with my hair. And um, when it was time for me to get rid of it, it was a process of deciding. Mm, like mm, I had so many conversations with my girl. I had conversations with myself. It felt like that's, like I said, a part of me had to die. So the hair, I, I definitely felt attached to that identity, you know? And I think I attached that identity to buying my own hype, like believing that Big Star Johnson is who I am as opposed to mm, mm, you know? Mm. So I just went back to the kid, the guy in primary school with the short haircut yeah. when the music started, you know. Um, I definitely don't think this is my style forever, but I just wanted to go back to feeling that purity as a kid because the music was so pure, you know. Uh, yeah. What died? The lies. The so, lies. Yeah, lying yeah. died. Lying died. Uh, piece of me, like, I believe I'm a very honest person mm -hmm. and the industry has a way of making you believe um, that you have to be a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. And coming from a TV show like The Hustle, mm -hmm. where you win even, uh, you begin to believe that what you used to win is what you need to apply in real life. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, The Hustle was very instruction-based, like mm -hmm. you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. So I, I took that mentality and applied it to myself in the industry. I need to do this. I need to be the the rapper who's impressive with his words. Sure. I need to be the I have to I have to have the best verse on every song. Sure. I need to be the winner at everything that I do. Mm -hmm. So um believing that and applying that to everything regarding the art, um, I feel like it created a totally different identity as to who I really was. 
And that's what had to be. Were you lying to yourself a lot about who you are? I, you know, I keep saying lying, but it's almost like there's conversations I wasn't having. Okay. Do you get what I'm trying to mm -hmm. say? Like this, there's, there's conversations with self out that I wasn't having. I wasn't having enough. Um, how do you feel about this? Uh, what do you want? Like, what's your take? Why, why, why are you respecting everybody more than you? You know, um, just do you like, there's a cool that you forgot. Like there's a cool that you bring into the world that you forgot. So I think it's just conversations that I wasn't having with myself. Did you, did you feel then that, um, winning the hustle um, I'll juxtapose the hustle to Idol South Africa because it seems to have 100%. that same um, 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 impression or 100%. that same um, effect on people's careers Yes, where it's such a massive production. Mm. It's got a massive production team mm. where there's profits at the center, where it's a TV production first, being before it is about unearthing talent. 100%. Let's remember that. 100%. So when you are pushed into that, you go as an impressionable young man mm who wants to unearth their talent because truly you're a creative at art. Yes. You're a hip hop artist yes. at heart. Yes. And this now career that you get into, you almost pushed into it. There's mm. no, there's no gradual progression yes. where you learn, fall, pick that piece up, yes. make that mess, yes. fail there, learn, yes. consult, yes. get advice. Is yes. that how you felt? And hence the pressure when you immediately won and now you had to step up and be great. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Um, I think that's definitely how I felt uh, because even prior to the hustle, I wasn't somebody who was trying to get into the industry. You know, uh, when the opportunity came about, I was at a friend's dentist appointment and a, a friend of mine said, let's shoot this audition video. And then I entered and then I had the verses that, so it was all very much like, okay, this is happening. You know, this is actually happening. Um, and, th and then now I sort of have, I had to switch my mentality to wanting this thing that i wasn't really chasing you know um and everybody's telling you this is what it is like this is your moment and like it's now or never so definitely being launched with the setup um has its pros and cons it's the the pros are obviously the platform your name is a household name um respect in the industry even uh well maybe for me that's my experience i got respect from the industry but the cons are that you don't have generic relationships. Sure. Do you get what I'm trying yeah. to say? Like, uh, there's nobody in the game is actually your friend. Okay. Do okay. you get what I'm trying to say? Uh, and anybody who's working with you at a certain period of time, they're working with you because of uh, the hype that you have at the moment. Clout. Know? Clout, man. Yeah. Clout, yeah. bro. So that's the biggest con. Uh, but I think for me... I can say, I don't like from, even from interviews and conversations with people, I had slightly more success than an idol's winner would have, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like that's just a testament to the, the actual respect that I give to the craft, you know? Um, I, I'm a, yo man, I respect music. I know that music is a spiritual thing and I know that it's a gift and I know that I'm here to do it for a reason and that there's things in my heart that, that people need to hear, you know? So I think that's always worked for me, even though I wasn't having those honest conversations mm -hmm. with myself. Uh, somehow, some way, the soul always has a way of shining through, you know, so people were able to connect with that somehow. Do you blame the hustle for losing yourself in the music journey rather than having an organic music journey growing? No, I don't blame the hustle. Um, I blame, I blame... You know, the right thing to do is to blame myself. Yeah. You know, it's to take accountability. Because yeah. I, can, I can look at scenarios where I... But deep down, um, 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 Big Star, yeah. we all have people we feel, but bro, as a, as a man, you could have done me better than that. 100%. And are 100%. there elements of people throughout the production, you were like, that person did me wrong. They had ill intentions. For sure, me. sure. Um, I can't say from production, bro. Um, I can say... After winning. After winning. Yeah. After winning. Especially the prizes as they were presented, you know. There were many like, uh, it didn't go down that way, you know. Um, especially with the PR company and the record label. Things worked themselves out. But how it happened, it, it was very like, figure it out. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, trying to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can't blame, I can't blame the production, man. Like, I feel like 
that show respected the artist and, and us mm -hmm. because the production was so good. Bro. True, true. It was so good. And it's what, one of a kind for it this was, country, at, especially at the time. Yeah, even yeah. The, the judges, like, they, yeah. they, they respected the genre. Yes. You know? So yes. I, I'll always big up the hustle, man. I feel like they, they did what they had to mm -hmm. do. What happens after that is 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 destiny. It's it's life playing out, man. The record label, PR yeah. company, yeah, didn't give you what you were expecting. I wasn't expecting. Um, it was more like, um, yeah, I don't know if is this like do we even go into it? Like, I guess this is the platform, right? Um, it was it was so. The PR company that I was I had to sign with was African Star Communications. FC Fortune. Yes. Yes. And the record label was Fifth Season. Okay. And they didn't get along. Okay. Uh, so that's the beginning of the, the Exactly. Trouble. Do you yeah, get what I'm yeah. trying to say? And that excludes you. Yeah, that excludes me yeah. as the hustle winner. Um, and, you know, navigating that, like the decisions I had to make, like I was given ultimatums, you work with them or you work with us, you know? And... This is like, I don't even know you, bro. Like, I don't know him. I don't know you. I don't know any of y'all. So how do I know who to trust? But how did they mix? Because they are PR and they are record label in this particular contract. Yes. So yes. Why, why are they giving you ultimatums? Man, it was personal, man. They, they had their own beefs, you know, um, because of prior clients. And, you know, you just get thrown into stuff like that. But like, like I said, man... Even even through all of that, there was still so much grace on my career, you know, like I was still able to have records that charted. I was still able to to work with the people that I wanted to work with. So I, I don't sit here today like complacent of, of the journey. I sit here um, appreciative of the fact that I got thrown into the real world very quickly and I was able to navigate it to a point where I still have the opportunity to make music. Is their fighting something that limited how great you could have become? It's hard to say. We'll never know. Yeah. You know, we'll never know. We'll never know. Um, I, I, I chose to park it, man. I chose to be like, you know what, this is not my fight. And the decision that I made at the time, which was to, to, to trust the label um, and take the gamble with the label because I didn't have like the structure, um, I think was the smartest decision. And it, 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 it put me in a, position where i can still do this this is this is something that a lot of competition winners don't get true do you get what i'm true. trying to say true. i'm still here doing it because yeah, of yeah. that decision how many competition winners are not on that seat because they're not even on the radar of exactly like our producers exactly. they don't have pr people who exactly. can reach out to podcasts exactly. and facilitate these conversations 100%. so so i fully get you mm. i want to go back to Big star and becoming a hip hop artist or yes. having the verses and the rhymes. Yes. Um, you, I believe that there is a certain age, maybe you cannot fully pinpoint it. You can give me a range mm. where you picked up a good man. I love rap. And where sure. was that age? Um, early teenager. Yeah. Early teenager. Um, I don't know. It was grade six, seven, a teenager. Yeah. 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 Like 13, 14. Like I was around there. Yeah. I was around there. Um, I, I, I'm a huge fan of melodies and harmonies. Growing up in a household with my father, who's a huge music fan, I always I could appreciate melodies and harmonies. But then I heard this rap crew called Bone Thugs and Harmony, mm -hmm. and their their style was very um, high tempo, mm -hmm. very melodic. So they never had a verse without melodies, you know. And I was like, whoa, the combination. And also when they, because I I grew up in a church background. Um, choral choral sounds and choral music so, yeah they're so, so mel melodic exactly yeah. so they they them being together was mind-blowing and yeah. i was also like wait they rapping um i i, I knew of hip-hop but i wasn't really a fan but to hear it in that style i was like okay this is something that i can really appreciate and i gave it a shot and i was good at it interesting um a, a lot of people go into rap as a a, a a healing process mm, from something. Mm. Would you say there are things in your life that were happening as a child mm. that music was making you escape? Hmm. Man, nah, 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 soft, you know? Yeah. Like, I, 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 like I, I tell my parents now, you know, I'm like, you know what? Uh, we may not have been the, 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 the wealthiest of families. Um, we, we did have to live in certain limitations, but I lived a soft life. Yeah. You guys did your thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, 
where you guys lack, you made up for in other areas. So, you know, so I so. can I take my hat off to your parenting. So I wouldn't say that, man. Like I think for me, before the rap was music, was music. Before I wrote my first verse, I was already playing drums in the church. Okay. Or, or practicing to play drums. Yeah. You know, I was I was starting and harnessing that skill. So, um, stuff like rhythm, you know, rhythm is something that I I yo. Oh, like I studied, you know, it's something that, that I can tell, I can break down for you. I teach it in my music school. And so that's why I say Bone Thugs and Harmony, they were like very rhythmic, very melodical. So I could tell that they were using other elements in their hip hop, you know, and I was impressed. So for me, hip hop, I didn't get into hip hop to escape anything. I got into hip hop to express. Mm. Yeah, I got into hip hop because I felt like I'm good with words and I can express this message. I don't think I've ever spoken, rather spoken to an artist, and they don't have a church element to yeah, it. Yeah, of course, um, of course. Church, as you said, you were learning the drum. Yes. Um, for a person who's a vocalist, they learn how to be a solo act. Yes. And learn how to balance their solo music yes. with backing vocalists. Yes. Some people discover whether I'm a soprano, I'm an alto. Um, so the church also you've got an audience that every week you sing to or exactly. you play your instrument to yes. something that some artists will never have a chance to even yeah. touch where they have an audience and depending on the size of the church of the size of the church it could be a 2000 3000 seater audience perspective you know 100%. so the church actually creates so many artists from different genres and we, we gotta give it th that credit eh? no definitely man i think it's something that I, I i i shied away from saying in interviews a lot after winning the hustle but man, Satan was was the the, the angel of, of worship. You mm. know what I'm trying mm. to say? Like you can't you can't really separate the church and 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 the gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not yeah. so much the artist, but the, the church the and the gift. Because the gift needs to shine through. Whether exactly, you like it or not, the exactly. gift will always tell you, "I need a platform. I need a platform." One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome, man. It's it's interesting though that you don't relate to music from a place of either escaping violence in the township because a lot of a lot of hip-hop artists are township people yes who had to escape drugs yes. and alcoholism yes. and divorced parents mm. and and mm. just a lot of pain but you saying actually your art still shone through from a, a rather pure place where yes. you were in a good place yes. um a good family situation do you think that, that then there is a place for art that it doesn't always have to come from pain yes definitely definitely i think even as a people as south africans as africans yeah. we are we are we are a dance people we mm -hmm. are celebratory people you mm -hmm. know um so there is a place but i cannot say that i've never created music from that place so this album that that's coming out now mm -hmm. um it took me so long to write because i i, I was out of the game i was out tapped out uh, the game left me with a heavy heart, mm. you know? That's mm, how I felt, mm, mm. you know? The game left me with a heavy heart. But when this album came, you know, um, it was the first time... It, so I couldn't write for like three years, and then I, I wrote nine songs on the album in three days, you know? And it was the first time I was hearing my thoughts from myself. Um, and, you know, I allowed the channel to speak. I allowed the soul to speak, you know? And music definitely healed a lot of things that I, that, that I had to heal. This project definitely took me through the ropes in terms of facing myself. It took me through the ropes in terms of identifying that it's, 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 it's the truth that needs to come out, bro. Like people don't know who you are. Like people, people respect you, but they don't know who you are, you know? And this album really like, you're going to get to know Dumelo. You know, um, I reunited with a, a primary school friend like that. That first verse that I wrote in primary school. Yeah. I was playing the album for him. And he's like, this is the first time, bro. Like, Because we, we weren't talking mm. throughout the, the, the success of the, uh, of the hustle and whatever. And you were too big for him. So our relationship had drifted before, yeah. Uh, but I definitely did disconnect from my people as yeah. well. Um, yeah. I got taken by this game, man. I'm yeah. not going to front. Um, not as bad as it could have been, but uh, yeah. Point is, I played him the project and he was like, Ndwana, this is the first time I hear Dumelo. You, you approached this music 
with the creativity you trusted as a child. And that's, I'm, I'm excited, oh, bro. Like, I can't wait for people to hear this yeah. because it's nothing like before. Uh, but it's also the, the, the guy who people saw. It's like yeah. People saw something in me that even I couldn't see. And now he's finally speaking. When did you realize that the South African music industry has broken me? Um, because you say three years. So yeah. I'm, I'm seeing 2020. Yeah, yeah, COVID. So after I had my kid, after yeah. I had my kid in 2018, I was at the height of my career. My album just dropped. I'm traveling the world. Um, but it just didn't feel like success. Sure. You know, it just didn't feel like success. It just... The relationships that I'm 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 working to keep are not serving me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm serving them, but they're not serving me. The people that I'm working with in the industry um, are, are, are utilizing my shine. You know, as opposed mm -hmm. to um, truly wanting to create something pure. Mm -hmm. You know, so it just didn't feel real. It didn't feel how it was supposed to feel, and you. Deep down, you know. Yeah. You know. So there was a lot of self work that I had to do, but at the same time, I think it was it was at the height of my career where I realized I need to like there's something about this that's not authentic to why why we doing this. You're not doing this for this. Something we don't speak about, but it's important. Um, I'll take you there, even though it's not a comfortable subject. Sure. Um, it's rather sensitive, but it's something that the kids need to know, especially the sure. kids now. Because sure. what you guys did for hip hop mm. is what the Ama Piano kids are doing now. 100%. In terms of the traveling, the level of stardom, yes. um, everybody wanting a piece of them, yes. the inauthentic relationships or the fake relationships that they're surrounded with. As you're saying, there were a lot of relationships that you had, you thought were genuine, but it was just people who wanted to ride on your stardom, right? How does the industry then um, introduce or not substance abuse in this process? Because the industry has a lot of substance abuse, which also leads to financial mismanagement in this process. Talk about it. And how do you think you woke up one day and you were like, because all these things have been introduced, I'm truly lost. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I was one who was like, I was, I, was, I was pushing it aside for a long time. I remember being in Botswana with Scoop, Scoop yeah. Makatini. And, yeah. You know, I was asking him, I was like, yo, Scoop, bro, do you ever think like the real artists will ever make it in the game? Like, I can see the gimmicks are starting to rise. This is when I'm about to step back from the game. I'm like, the gimmicks are starting, man. Yeah. And he was like, Star, um, when you pray, when you pray, mm. do you ever feel like your prayers are not channeled the way they're supposed to? Mm -hmm. You know? And I was like, Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah you, you're being deep. Airy fairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's only like a year later where I, I went through like a, an awakening, you know, which, you know, the, the globe also went through like some sort of awakening. But when, when I went through my personal one, it was, oh, man, like there's there's so much about your lineage that you know nothing about, you know. um, You've detached yourself from who you really are, you know, sort of like Simba in the Lion King, you're like, you have forgotten me. Mm. Um, I had, I, I had the same type of thing and I had to sort of like really sit down and, and get to know my father and get to know, um, his story, you know? And in that conversation with Scoop, he was like, isn't it funny that you can, I, you can tell me where Jay-Z went to school mm. and where, where Jay-Z walked. He walked in these streets of Marcy, Brooklyn or whatever. But you can't tell me about your grandfather. Where did mm. your grandfather go to school? Bro. I, and the, I mean, I, I rejected that. Yeah. But it took, it took such a long time for me to be like, okay, no, there's, 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 there's important things in this world that you need to, that you can't ignore, especially as a man. So... I think finding my grounding and understanding my lineage, getting back to Dumen or cutting my hair, you know, going through, letting the process of getting to the end of this album and what it took. It's like, okay, God, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. But yeah, man. I, yeah. Let me leave it there. Would you say you wasted a lot of money in that process where you thought this peak would last forever? I blew dough, bro. Yeah. No, I blew dough. Nah, 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 nah. nah. We ate that dough, we blew that dough. 
you know um and i think it was a shock i remember the first month after the hustle you know first time you're going to durban oh they're giving you 10k in this club 10k in that club 10k in that club in one night two of those clubs are giving it to you in cash mm. you know cash leaves your your hand as quickly as it comes in oh, <laughs> so i think yeah man I, I definitely blew dough i blew dough um i i i yeah like you said the substance abuse you know um you never really take it seriously until you you realize that you've 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 let go of who your strength mm -hmm. you've you've given your strength to the world telling you who you are you know um so i uh, can't say that how does it come about the substance abuse is it just a cool thing to do in the industry because once again this is important to talk about because mm -hmm. there are kids right now who are yearning for that breakthrough in 100%, the industry 100%. but they don't know of these things on mm -hmm. the other side mm -hmm. is it something that you find in the industry that's cool because everybody else is doing mm -hmm. or do you now reflect when you took your break and you're like no man people weren't coping that's why they're doing this yes people don't know who they are that's why they're doing this yes people um actually have bad financial management skills yes people are addicted yes people are not keeping up with their schedule they're taking too many bookings that they can handle 100 percent um all those things all those things and i think the biggest thing man it's it's also us us black people we we we, we don't necessarily come from non-supportive households but we don't come from supportive households so sure. do you I get what you. i'm trying I to hear say you. so I, i'd say the biggest thing man like this thing of self this thing of self like self-made you know it, it's it's the biggest trap mm. you know because you're not having genuine conversations and losing your original community like you need to stay connected to your community mm -hmm. and people who know you for who you and these are things these are cliches bro mm -hmm. these are these are cliches mm -hmm. i've heard this in a thousand interviews but it's the truth like these things catch if if you don't know where you're going everyone will tell you where to go mm -hmm. do you get what i'm trying to say so and obviously whenever you enter something new uh, you sort of have to ask questions before you speak so that's sort of how these things are introduced you know you're asking questions what do we do when we're in studio oh take a drink here's a blunt here's a you know and it just keeps on it, it can escalate yeah you know without you realizing yeah it can escalate so as you ask questions always go back to your original community so that you can decide who you are um um i think people are awake to that but your community is a big deal would you say in the in the time you took a break yeah uh, i'd say around 2020 because mm. you, you keep referring to three years yeah um you, your daughter was two then? Yes. Was two years old. Yes. So now you have this responsibility of being a father as well yes. amidst all of this. Yes. Um, would you say that also was an awakening moment that I'm a father now. I yeah. need to do better. Yeah. Yeah. So the relationship with the mother of my child didn't work out. Um, we cool. We straight. But it just didn't work out. So she's always mm -hmm. lived with my daughter. And when the awakening happened, it was a year where she was like, can you please stay with the child uh, this year? I'm just trying to figure some things out. Of course, I'll stay with the child. I can do this. I, I did it in the beginning <laughs> when things were good. Yeah. Bro, the the sacrifice required, and it's not sacrifice, it's responsibility. True, true. You know, um, but the, the discipline required. Yeah, yeah. The, the growing up required. The growing up required. Um, it definitely happened with me, you know, and... You, you begin to ask the right questions. Uh, it, I, well, I began to ask the right questions like, what am I leaving behind? What, with this little time that I have, what am I leaving behind? Like, what, what am I going to give this girl? Mm. Like, what knowledge can I give her? Or, or just not even knowledge, but truths, mm. uh, her father's truths. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, where, where will she hear them? Where will mm -hmm. she catch them? Mm -hmm. How will she know if... I, I don't get the chance to do it, you know? So my awakening was really like, bro, they need you. The game, need, like, we need you. Like, those words, like, I kept hearing that, like, we need you, we need you. Like, and that we need you was, it's it's more than just um, my kid um, and, and my soul saying, come back to self. It was also like, the, the South African industry, bro, and I'm not saying this out of arrogance, mm -hmm. like, it's a responsibility. Sure. It's it's a call. Sure. You know, like I'm here because there's there's something that I need to impart, you know? And 
I definitely believe that I've, I've, I've started that journey and I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. I, I'm sitting here having this conversation because it's, it's, it's happening. What needs to happen is happening. What happens in the three years off? Um, you wake up to the fact that, okay, you tried to start a family and you failed. Uh-huh. Boom. You failed that family. Huh. Woo. That's a fundamental. Woo. <laughs> like that the, is a fundamental. In real life. Yeah. In real life. In we, real life. We all live for family. Do you get what I'm trying That's to it. say? So, Full stop. Huge. Yeah. Um, you don't know your parents. Um, you're so caught up in this days, you know, like you're running out of time. So what I do is I get serious about my music school. Um, get the structure going. Okay, cool. We got a music school. We got income. The kid is taken care of. Great. Um, now you need to sort of, and the crazy thing is through all of this, my, my parents are going through a divorce. When it's time to get to know them, they're getting divorced, you know? So I'm getting to know them in their angry selves. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah. When, when yeah, they're at the yeah. peak of their anger. Absolutely. I'm asking these questions. So I'm also seeing, oh man, like I have all of this inside of me. I don't look at the, I don't, I never look at, I well, I try not to look at people with judgmental eyes. Like I try to look with empathy and compassion. So I look and I'm like, oh, this anger, this pain, this love, because it all comes from love. It's so I'm, I'm, I'm having real conversations with mm-hmm. myself. I'm getting down to the core of purpose. I'm getting down to the core of why are you here? What are you doing? What, what, okay. Uh, so this is them. Who are you? You know, who are you? And, and, and what are you here to do? You know? And, yeah, I'm still on that journey. Yeah, uh, but I'm, I'm, I can see the progress. Yeah, I can see the progress. And right now, you are ready to come back into the spotlight. Hundred percent. Because of the work that has been going on in the background when you were out of the spotlight. Hundred percent. Is it important to take time out of the spotlight for artists? Because a lot of people will say, um, "Oh my gosh, Beyonce, you haven't released an album in four years." Yes. But when you look at a Beyonce, um, for her to go on tour, mm-hmm. she loses weight. Yes. She goes vegan. Mm-hmm. Um, she takes extremes yes. to make sure she fits the Beyonce that she wants to give out to the world. Deep, yeah. But in the four years, she could be raising a blue ivy of one of the new kids, which yes. is important. Yes. Going back to family yes. and going back to the origins that yes. she'll say, I'll have a child, um, raise my child, completely dissociate from the, my team per mm. se and mm. be a mother just be a mother to my children yes and attend their first days attend the cricket matches um do the do those small fundamentals so do you think that was the importance of taking time off 100 percent, 100 percent. um going through that i never i never felt that way mm-hmm. you know going through everything i was going through there was a lot of why what is this how you know like why is not you know but it is important and i mean i i, I say this with a, a, a white heart, you know, a capelletsue, you know, translating, yeah. Mm. But you may like artists who who dish out music every six months. <laughs> it's a new album. <laughs> cool, cool. You may like artists who 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 are doing what I was doing in this in a form of like they're always trying to impress you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. But if 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 you listen to music for a reason that is that that is beyond yourself like you don't even know like i I once saw this guy say uh science science and art are are synonymous Mm -hmm. but people tend to believe that science is more important yeah yeah but it's like science is important or or science or music is not as important or art is not as important until you're going through something Mm -hmm. and you can't identify the emotions sure and you listen to the song and the song tells you exactly how you're feeling sure then you understand that art is 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 the sort of progress it helps you progress in life mm-hmm. just as much as, as science, science does yeah. so if you listen to music with the understanding like that like for me bro j cole is a big brother mm-hmm. like i his perspectives in life they 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 shape mine mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. if if you listen to music aware of those things aware of stuff like or if you respect jazz because you know the hours it takes to learn a certain instrument and 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 the discipline and the 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 openness you have to be in order to allow this creativity to flow. If mm-hmm. you respect stuff like that, then I'm I'm your type of artist. So Beyonce is your type of artist. Yeah. People who live, people who 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 respect the process of life in order to give you projects that are true, projects that are authentic, projects. Timeless. 
Man. Yeah. That's what it's about. <laughs> that's what it's about. For me, that's what it's about. In the silence, um, as you said, that in the hype, you're surrounded by a lot of people. For sure. Everybody wants a piece of you. Everybody wants a piece of you. For sure. You take a step back. You're not releasing music. You're yeah. deliberately dissociating from the circle. Yes. One person who still made an effort to try and check, Big Star, are you okay? Who is it? Oh, my brother. My younger yeah. brother. Uh, my younger brother, definitely a big part of my support structure. He's a, he's a fan first. So it makes it very refreshing to have conversations with him. He's a critical thinker. He studied uh, psychology. So he's, he's a critic first, mm. he's a cynic mm. uh, in, in character, uh, but he's also a realist. So definitely having someone like that carried me. You know, I remember I, there's, a, there's a point where I felt like I was losing my mind, literally, you know, um, and he said this to me. And listen, this is great advice. He said, bro, two weeks from now, this will be two weeks ago. Yeah. That changed my life. Yeah. That gave me strength. Yeah. That statement gave me strength. You yeah. know? And it's like that. He's, he's that type of guy. He's a, he's a guy who gives it to you straight. Like, I know you're going through it. Mm, mm, mm. I know. Yeah. But two weeks from now. It'll be two weeks ago this from this page. Exactly. Yeah. Th this hardship will be two weeks ago. Yeah. So my brother, my brother, that was the guy who, who definitely held, held me down. Why do you think at your instinct you didn't give me any name from the industry that we know? <sighs> because they all fell away? Man, I'll tell you this. Um, the industry is a trippy place, Joe. People, people, people aren't genuine. Huh. And they are genuine. So I don't I don't blame them. Like I say, I, I look at it with a different lens, you know. If if you genuinely feel like you have, you're not going to gain um, anything and you don't work with me, that's okay. That's okay. So people, people are who they are. And, and the industry, the industry just, I guess, it, it makes people forget that the best is always in a room full of geniuses. Mm -hmm. That's where the best happens. That's where that's where the magic happens. That's where the miracle happens, you know. When two or three are gathered, you know. So I'm okay with it, bro. And I I I don't look at anything as though it wasn't meant to happen, you know. Um, everything that happens, especially if you if if you if you believe what I believe, everything that happens happens for a reason. Everything. So. Man, I know a lot of the guys, and I, I, I've had close knit relationships in the in the industry, but for a purpose, for a purpose, not for the purpose of friendship. DJ Fresh says that when he was going through his tough times in the media, which happened probably three to four years ago as well. For sure. When um, he was accused um, over many things, which are still going in court, so we won't mention it. Mm. Um, he says that Black Coffee or Skido were one of the two people who would call him and say, are you okay? Mm. And there was a time where he didn't have enough money for something. Oskido gave him money. Both Oskido and Black Coffee gave him money. Mm. And when he did have money again, we wanted to pay them back. They said, no, bro. Yes. We, we don't need to pay us back. Yes. You've done enough for the game. Yes. Do you think perhaps the reason you didn't have your Black Coffee or your Oskido yes. is because in your prime, you didn't build solid enough relationships and that's you taking accountability on your end? I can do that. I can I can take that. Yeah. I can take that. Yeah. You know, I can take that. I can, I, and I take it easily mm -hmm. you know um because like i said perspective is a huge thing you know and realizing my perspective was a certain way you know um at the peak of my career definitely brought about a certain result in my life so i can accept that i can accept that but i'll, I'll always say it's keep it genuine man keep it just like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and and and, and uh, helping help but that's another thing I could say. I wasn't helping people. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So you see things and you're like, okay, how, can, like, I how can I expect help? How can I expect if I don't? You yeah. Know? So yeah. 
Yeah. It's like, okay, 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 there's nothing. J- Jordan Peterson says it, like, there's nothing that you, you get away with ever. Mm, like, mm. ever. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back. Yeah, no, there's nothing you get away Especially if your soul knows, you know, if your soul knows. So, man, back back, back to who I really am. I'm, and I see it, bro. Like, it, God works with law. You know, and 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 grace. Mm. So it's like, oh, okay. If you if you apply yourself, life applies itself for you as well. So yeah, I, I I've definitely started implementing the changes that are that that I feel like I had to, and I'm seeing the fruits, bro. Like it's beyond the music. Like just self, my 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 soul is it's beaming. It's beaming at the fact that I finally see. That's the biggest thing. You, you're speaking so with so much reverence and with so much understanding about God. Um, it, it seems like to me, part of your journey has been going back to God 100%. and speaking to God in a manner that is more about relationship. Yeah. Seeking God yes. for answers. Yes. Seeking God for for positioning, seeking God for you understanding your purpose all over again. Um, what is the common theme between you and God right now at where you are in life? Uh, gratitude, mm. gratitude for the past year going into this one. I'm so grateful, bro. I'm so grateful. There's a lot to be grateful for. Um, I have a song on the album with Touchline, you know, right? And, and like, talented yeah. gent, highly talented. Eastside, yo, come <laughs> on. Um, and 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 that song. I have a conversation with God, mm-hmm. you know, and um, there's a power. I start the verse of like, I'm weak, Lord. Ten years straight, we ain't speak, Lord. Mm. See me getting tired in my feet, Lord. See, I've been uninspired on these beats, Lord. Let my gang and buah be in the streets, Lord. Can we meet, Lord? Hold me down, major key, like a C chord. Been around and I've seen we on default, so I gotta cleanse, take a bath with some sea salt. I've been moving way too unconscious. So now I gotta pray for my conscious. But the Mubako Haya say they tired of my nonsense. I gotta switch it up. No more looking for my peace in the sippy cup. I'm in need of a release. Can you pick me up? Till I'm strong enough, you know? And the name of the song is titled Strong Enough. <laughs> Bro. Do you realize that writing that prayer? It's a prayer. Full on prayer. It's a prayer. You know, and it's like, Ish, bro, that's where you get your cool. Mm. Like, that's where you get your suave. That's where you get your skill. That's that's you. You know? And definitely, man, I can say honestly, for like two years or so, it me deep in the fame. I wasn't praying. Mm. I wasn't praying. Praying for what? Waiting my time. That's what you think of it at the time, man. Eh? Not really. You know, you're just like, God, you know me. Mm. You know? You know, the, uh, man. So it was, it was, it was. It was just like, oh, I haven't had an honest conversation with God in a very long time. You know, but that's because I haven't had an honest conversation with myself in a very long time. So having those conversations has been a, a, a beautiful journey. A beautiful journey. It's a hard one, though. <laughs> Bro. God breaks you apart. Bro, like I said, you die. <laughs> yeah. He has to die. So. You know? Um, so that means everything you believe in a certain oh, everything you believe, everything you are has to break to pieces. And hey man, refining the refining process is sure. uh Ooh. it's a tough one, but it's the most beautiful thing if you if you hold on to what you're told to hold on to, you know, if you if you hold on to to the cause, if you hold on to the reason why you started, you know. And and like he always sends through passes, Joe. Like there's always a through pass. Always a through pass. If you're trying, he's he's not gonna leave you, bro. Mm. He's gonna I know you want a 10k, here's five. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like that, you know, he's like here's five, don't get ahead of yourself. Oh, you wanted a hundred, here's fifty. Yeah. But then sometimes you wanted a hundred, here's a million. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, yeah. he does that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. he's been doing that. The real it is for you, the real it is in real life. So it's, it's 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 pretty real for me right now. Like my 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 spiritual journey is a priority. My family journey is a priority. My musical journey is a priority. My purpose is a priority. It's a huge priority to me right now. I'm here for a reason. You speak about a, a, 
a season in your life where you realized that you were you weren't giving family and your daughter enough that yes she w- deserved from a father are you do you think that you've now overcome that dad guilt it took yes yo it's how do you know is there's a thing is there a thing called dad guilt absolutely oh my goodness bro that's a thing that's a thing yeah but yeah definitely definitely um being more involved knowing who she is you know like it, it takes a lot for you to know somebody it takes attention it takes caring it takes opening your eyes to the other person's existence and allowing them to be who they are so knowing who she is and and also being able to to play my part the way i want to you know uh, not just keeping her alive but <laughs> she's living yeah i'm over the dead guilt i'm gonna keep this up you 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 on a trajectory where you're like i'm a father man i'm yeah, a mate. good i'm a damn good father i'm on mate yeah that's a real thing mate yeah that's a real thing um and it took a while it takes a while it takes it takes people telling you it takes having conversations with the people that you trust you know um but then when you see it and when you hear it i mean she tells you you're a great dad what more can you do how much of it do you think comes from having a good partner i mean you've broken up with the mother yes but you now have a new partner yes I how much of it is an influence that comes from your current partner who says in daughter step up as a dad hey bro my, my my current partner is a beast yeah you know um she's a beast she's a phenomenal woman she's a critical thinker she's a a very articulate woman i think women if you guys want to kiss your man <laughs> like kiss your man like you want your man to understand you learn to articulate like really learn to articulate like it's a big thing like don't just discuss your feelings articulate the core she's she's an amazing articulator yeah um, so yeah. yeah like being able to have genuine conversations with the woman and also get her perspective she has her own family with their their own journeys and being able to have genuine conversations like i say genius happens when two or more are gathered so yeah. definitely that 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 chemistry has has brought about a massive improvement in my life i can say it crazy improvement shout out to you shout out to you baby do do you believe then once again that even though it's now coming in the form of i'd say a blended family mm. this still is the family that you've been seeking so much to build and you're like finally i'm building family properly again 100 percent, 100 percent. uh on saturday it's saturday today so yeah friday um Yesterday, I was taking a walk with my girl, my daughter, and the dog, our, our new puppy, Lady. And there was a moment, <laughs> you know? There was a moment. I'm, I'm looking and I'm like, this is it, man. This is it, you know? Uh, it's not, it's not, it's, it's never been the numbers for me. It's n- like, I'm not phased, bro. I'm not phased. And then the truth is like, I'm doing, I'm doing well for somebody who's not chasing. You know, huh. <laughs> like, I, I don't care about you. Your, I care about the fact that I'm here to do what I'm here to yeah, do. Yeah. So this is it, man. Being able to, to know that she's eating, she's eating, the dog is eating, you eating, we nice, we got, we got what we need, you know, and, and, and we, the, it's, we're not faking it. We're not faking this affection. We're not doing this for an image. We're not doing this for, for Instagram, you know? Whereas I thought like that for so long. Huh. It's like, yeah, nah, this is it. We're finally here, mate. You're finally living, mate, eh? I'm good with my dad. That's huge. Like mm. the um, the album is titled Caesar and Caesar is my dad's AKA. Like okay. it's, he's Big Star Johnson. Yeah, yeah. So like, man, you're gonna hear like you're gonna hear the stories. It's 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 truly a son turning into a father. Mm-hmm understanding his role as a father Mm -hmm. and then understanding his father lineage yeah lineage is a huge theme uh in In the album in the album yeah and 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 you'll hear it's a healing it's for healing Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. there was a lot of healing that took place in those three days you know uh when we're recording those songs and a lot of fighting uh with with self and breaking down these things that have been stopping like why haven't I been releasing music? Oh, okay. Because you're not having these chats. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Caesar to be out there and people to, to give it a listen. I, I, I know for a fact that 
it's going to be a polarizing album in the sense that you either hate it or love it but that's going to be based on are you are you are you are you willing to deal or are you still are you still ignoring things and i'm okay with that like music finds you when it finds you you know i i've fallen in love i've fallen in love with songs that dropped 10 years ago yeah yeah and they will come as long as it's out bro as long as it it, it flowed through me and i gave it to the world i've done my part on to the next one the year is 2030 um your daughter is 12 13 years old and she is seeing this interview because the internet is here to stay best believe and this yes. will live on for a very long time yes. she's 13 years old she's mm. on the she's just becoming a teenager mm. she's going through a puberty process she's going through a, 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 a an identity process where she wants to know who she is and she sees this interview and she's like that's my dad what mm. do you what are you saying to her right there and then hmm what am i saying um uh, i'm saying Take it one day at a time, you know, take everything one day at a time. Um, you don't, oh, please, please, please never feel like you have to have it all figured out. Hmm. You don't have to have it all figured out. You'll never have it all figured out. And the problem is you're too smart, so you're going to try and figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you don't have to. You don't have to. You're good. You're blessed. Um, yeah, your pops is a G. Um and yeah man shine shine take it one day at a time don't have to figure it out life is too long for you to want to know everything and then be a young adult then be a, an adult live your life but you're here for a reason but you don't have to figure it out what's the one thing you absolutely know for sure in life you're absolutely certain of What's the one thing I'm absolutely certain of? Um, sheesh, what am I absolutely certain of? I don't know. You know, I can honestly say, I think nothing is for certain. Sure. <laughs> nothing is for certain. Yeah. Um, and... I know for certain that nobody knows what tomorrow holds. Yeah. <laughs> you can project, you can have hopes, you can have screens that tell you that the weather going to be this way. Uh-huh. But nobody knows what tomorrow holds. Mm -hmm. So live by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Victor Johnson, thank you so much. Lumster. It's been a privilege, bro. Appreciate thank you. Bro. Thank you for your time. More blessings. Thank you for your sharing your healing with us. Thank you for being vulnerable enough to share the process that you're going through with us. For sure. And thank you for being open and honest about everything you've gone through. Thank you. Until next time, bro, you're well welcome here. Oh, thank you. And I will be back because, trust me, bigger, bigger things come in your way. Like I said, I see you, bro. We see you. Keep going. Thank you, brother. Introducing the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. 
your oasis of opulence awaits.